Hey guys, John here. Today I wanted to share three cool things with what I call the hidden signal generator within pigments. Now I say hidden because it's tucked away between a menu and it's kind of really not in our face. So let's go over here to a new preset and we're gonna be greeted with the wavetable engine and that's fine. So let's go down here where it says wavetable and turn this volume all the way down and turn a modulator all the way up. Now over here where it says tune rat, let's select this button here and go to Hertz. Now we're gonna be greeted with a signal generator, right? So all the way at the bottom, it goes from 0.1 all the way to the top, which is 20K. Now our hearing is generally between 20 Hertz and 20K, which is, which is great that we have that range and that's awesome, but we also have stuff below that. So you might be asking yourself, okay, why do I care about this knob? Why is this an important video? So let's say you're maybe making a kick drum, a tom drum, maybe an 808 or something kind of like that. So what we can do is we can tone in on a fundamental frequency. So let's say like 47 or 46 hertz around there, something kind of low endy, right? Now we can get an envelope as a pitch envelope and bring this right over here. And then when we hit something, we can get something kind of like that. And depending on our envelope curve, we can really change the tonality of the song. So if you're kind of looking for some kind of low end hit, kind of do something like that, or maybe reduce the influence if you don't want it to start so high pitched. Or we can make it a lot quicker and maybe do something like a kick drum. And with that same envelope, we can even go to a utility engine, turn on a noise oscillator, drag that over to the volume, bring this down and kind of simulate the attack of a kick drum. So there's a little bit more involved with a kick drum. If you're curious on how to make a kick drum, there is a video I've already done on that and it's in this playlist if you wanna check that out. But this is basically the concept and how easy it is in pigments to really make something like that. With the tom drum, it's pretty much the same process. We're just gonna tune this fundamental a little bit higher and maybe speed up our envelope a little bit to where we really feel it's right. And with sounds like that, it's really the envelopes, the decay curves and stuff like that that really make the tonality what it is. So that's number one, that's really cool. So number two, let's go over here to the utility engine and let's remove this modulation. Let's go back to our wavetable, remove this modulation as well. And let's turn this volume back down and let's turn our wavetable back up. So what's really cool about this is we can really choose a specific amount that we want to frequency modulate something else with. So right now we have this sine wave which is the wave table sine wave, not the modulator, what we were listening to before. Now let's say we wanna make a really interesting timbre, like a pluck sound or something kind of like that, right? So let's go to the envelope number two and let's put this on the frequency modulation here and maybe bring a healthy amount up, something kind of like that. And let's set this envelope kind of back to default here. So now we have this tune. So we have this basic type of tonality here. Now maybe that's a little bit too long, so we wanna shorten that sound. Something like that, and now we can change the timbre. Something almost a little bit metallic, marimba kind of style. So we have something like that, and with the pluck, we're gonna reduce our sustain from our amp envelope. So we have something kind of like that, so let's turn this volume up here. So with this technique, we can really get some interesting timbres and we can always choose very, very detailed what value of frequency we really want to target. And we can always hold down right click and kind of slightly move through these different values and kind of see what we really like to hear. So maybe something kind of like that that we like, 9,425. And with something this simple and this basic here, now we can go maybe into our effects, bring up our delay a little bit like this and bring up our reverb. And make kind of a cool sound like that. Now, with this concept, we can always expand on this a little bit further. Right now on our modulator, we have a wave form right here, which is gonna be a sign of what we've been listening to. We can always change it to triangle, sawtooth, or the ramp up, which is kind of the same thing, or a square. And with these different types of waveforms, we can always check a different type of tonality. And then we can always go to the frequency type right over here and go to exponential if we want something a little bit more intense.
So yeah, that's kind of the, the second cool concept of this. And now the third. So let's go back to a new preset here and we're going to do the same thing over here. Let's reduce the wavetable volume down to something kind of like this. Let's bring up our modulator, something around there, for example. And let's go back to the Hertz value. So what's really cool about this is this is a signal generator. So let's say we have a new pair of speakers. Maybe we plugged in a new sub that we got or we're checking a new pair of headphones. And we kind of just want to sweep through the frequencies and see how everything sounds. Maybe maybe we think our bass is too heavy or maybe on our on our speakers we think that the uh, the tweeter is a little bit too loud or something might be broken this is a good way to check something like that by running signal through and seeing what it sounds like if we if we did a, a signal sweep through it and we noticed that maybe our right speaker is a little bit too quiet or something kind of like that then this is a good way to find out what the problem is so as we said before, our frequency hearing goes from 20 hertz to 20K. So what we can do is we can go something like this to 20K right here and then right click to really hone in on exactly 20 if we want to be exactly precise, something like that. And then let's say we want to sweep through the whole thing. So we can grab a function, grab this function number one and bring it all the way here and then bring it all the way to the top like that. And then instead of having it kind of bounce back and forth, let's go play once over here and let's bring this to the right, like something like that. Now, when we hit a note, we have a signal sweep. So this might be a little bit fast. So over here, you can select this here and also go down to Hertz mode and kind of just hone in how fast you want this to go. And you can really kind of tell how, how your speakers or your headphones are really going to react with something like that because sometimes you really will need a signal generator in different types of situations and even if you're sound designing in pigments it's kind of nice to know that you have something like that built into the synthesizer so those are my three main things that's really cool about this hidden oscillator and like i said i call it hidden because you don't really know that it's there because you have to like turn down the volume of the wavetable turn up the modulator go to the tuning and select this one down over here and then you can kind of hear it so it's not really in front of your face we kind of have to look for it to find it and last thing before we let you go, keep in mind that this type of uh, signal generator is available in the wavetable here. It's also available in the sample, but we're gonna have to turn on the sample and then do the same thing as we did here before as well. And it's also available in the harmonic by doing the same process. But keep in mind, I did this with the wavetable because if we go with the sample, every time we are gonna be using this, for example, let's turn this up here. It's going to be triggering a sample and maybe we don't want that maybe that's going to add a little bit more processing or if we go to the harmonic engine and turn down our partial volume and then increase this hertz right here it's still going to basically process these individual sine waves which will add to more cpu usage so that's why i chose to use it in the wave table which is going to be the lightest version of that if we're just using it for a signal generator that is so uh yeah i thought i would mention that it in, and it is not available in the analog engine so Hopefully you learned something throughout this video and maybe you can make some cool patches with the FM technique right there using a very precise value of frequency. So yeah, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.